Greetings and welcome to The Prime Directive. I'm your host, Jeff Ogo, my co-host as always, Chris. Say hi, Chris. Hello. Discovery, season four, episode mm-hmm. 12. Mm-hmm. What'd you think? That was pretty good. Yeah, it was decent. Yeah, it looked good. Yeah. I'm a lot more excited about Picard, but <clears throat> you guys can you're, go see that. You're very we're gonna, excited we're about We're going to talk Picard. about this. <laughs> Should I, like, totally defend Discovery now? Because I, mean, like, I was nitpicking Picard. Should I just be like, Discovery was awesome, Chris. What are you talking about? That was amazing. There was good parts. There was a lot of good parts. Yeah. I really don't like that general. <laughs> <laughs> She's not suspicious at all. Yeah. Excuse me while I keep going to the empty deck every single time. Like, I... I you should so see the doctor, like, clearly you have a problem. I need to go to the bathroom again. This is the 15th time. <laughs> Sounds like the start of a frighteningly long process. Could be. Hmm. Yes, Captain. I just need a moment. They're working on communication. Mm-hmm. Um, clearly the writers saw the movie The Arrival. Yeah. A uh, great movie. Yeah. And I did like the problem and the way they worked it this episode. It, it felt pretty good. I was interested. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they totally stole it from that movie. <laughs> Largely, yes. Like, even the, the even the part where the <laughs> asshole guy blows it up and ruins everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Also saw a Stargate. Mm-hmm. As they sent the bots out to go like deliver some pheromones or whatever so they could communicate and mm-hmm. just shoom, and just took yep. away the bots. Yep. And then they're just like, oh shit, we better run. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like panicking and it's like, let's go to warp, let's go to warp. Took them a really long time to not go to warp. Yeah. I was just like, oh. Uh, you could have you could have shroomed it. Actually, Dude. no, they can't shroom because they're in. Yeah, okay, Maybe Detmer shroomed and that's why she was slow on the uptake of like, Maybe. oh, go to warp. <laughs> She says, like, I thought we were staying here, man. And maybe that's why she, you know, was super helpful with, uh, you know, solving the problem. Because she's just way out there with the weird ideas. Well, it's I mean, like music, man. I mean, they're in such a panic. If you look at the last episode when they had time to go to the bar and chill. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe she just had one too many drinks and that's all. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. So they get sucked in. Mm-hmm. Um, we, get, we get some good sarcasm with Reno. Yeah, yeah, no, she's great. She's yeah. great. Black licorice. Black. It seems to be a Star Trek thing. <laughs> <laughs> it must be. Yeah. It must be. Like, it's... Like, you wouldn't call that a reference or a nod to anything, but just the fact that Lower Decks did a black licorice gag, like, I just, I assume they're sharing notes and these are just well, little nods. It's all to that each they other. could eat. Yeah. It's all that it would replicate, and then yeah. that's all that she wanted, and she ate, like, so many. Yeah, black licorice. Yeah, black. And then last episode of the hot banana, I'm just like, oh, mm-hmm. it's merging. It's gotta be. I think they realized how popular Lower Decks is, and they're just like, hey, <laughs> it's because of the black licorice. Anyway, we could get Jack Quaid Boimler to come on by. <laughs> Commander, licorice, made to order. Much obliged. get a fire dragon they go to the the shuttle bay and we see the the whole little setup and we get a fire dragon that's what i saw i don't know mm-hmm. what you saw when you looked in there but it looked like the shape of a dragon yeah a fire dragon space whale thing yeah, yeah. and then they sent a, a shuttle mm-hmm. which was like a cgi clear ball mm-hmm. and when it landed it suddenly developed doors yeah very discovery doors yeah go inside and it's the bridge of discovery yeah and i'm just like First of all, you shouldn't have like these ambassadors there. Vulcan one fine. She controls well, herself. I mean, it's it's their planets but that the are being general, blown up. Like I totally just sense because I've seen it a hundred times before. They're gonna panic and shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> just totally expected that I instead mean, of her constant yeah. bathroom breaks. It's their planets, and the general didn't come in the the ball. Yeah. yeah. Well, guess what? Seniority rules, and it was Burnham's planet long before it was the generals. <laughs> yeah. The whole crew. Yeah. Um, I really did, yeah, I, I, I said it before, but I really did like them figuring out how this, um, how this language worked and what they were, what they were, uh, trying to communicate. And the bit where the three bridge officers beamed in, uh, was the closest we're ever going to get to a department meeting in this series. How could the hydrocarbons contain emotional and semantic content? Maybe it's like music. A piano piece evokes emotion, but also has a structure of pitches, note lengths, tempo. Right? Uh, 
Uh, like that was, you know, functionally a department meeting scene. Book was kind of listening to a department meeting mm -hmm. on the other side of that wall last episode. <laughs> uh huh. Um, but yeah, and again, though, I was just like, why are people transporting stranded? Like, Stane's is talking to Hugh, and he's just like, yeah, man, like, when this is over, we should take a vacation. Like, mm -hmm. beep, I'm gone. <clears throat> I really, I, I do think though that when Discovery does this kind of stuff, it is way too saccharine and it's way too bonk bonk on the head. It's just like, usually when we're having problems, we need to get a diverse set of opinions. And it's like, can I get a diverse set of people to come down to the shuttle bay, please? <laughs> Foom. Hi. <laughs> Have you considered doing this? Thank you, person. You can go now. <laughs> it's like, it, it's a bit on the nose, isn't it? Yes, no, I think you described that perfectly. <laughs> it's a bit on the nose, and like, contrasting that to Picard, where they did have a bunch of people with diverse skill sets and doing different things, and they just, they just kind of did their jobs, man. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, that's supposed to be what Star Trek is, it's like, we don't have diversity, we're just all different and we're all working together. Well, I mean, they certainly have diversity, but, yeah, but like, they're they not out They don't use the word, they don't be like, we need this, like, mm -hmm. It's, it's just kind of understood, like, of yeah. course, we, we need the best people, so we get the best people, and we don't really think about <laughs> any other qualities beyond that. Yeah, I mean, how many of them went off to be captains? Like, mm -hmm. I'm thinking TOS here, but... Spock, Sue, <laughs> all of them. I mean, yeah, okay, Uhura was a communications officer forever, mm -hmm. and apparently, even when Pike was, so forever. <laughs> However... Should become captain because of this pie series. It's yeah, because why not? Why not? So you get offered it a bunch of times. Like, you know what? I just like talking to people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I just like doing this. I wonder if she'll be better. I'm oh, sorry to go completely off rails, but I have to point this out. Will new Ohura be able to speak Klingon? Ooh. Because I will throw a red flag. Ooh. Because I remember her okay. holding the yep. book yep. in yep. Star yep. Trek. Yep. 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 Because we know. We know <laughs> yeah. We know JJ Uhura can speak Klingon, which is a little eh. Yeah. But no, Prime Prime Uhura does not speak Klingon. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get you on that, guys. Okay, shit, here we go. Back to, uh, back back to, to Discovery. Discovery. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I really, uh, I like that they had that doctor at first uh, being like, <laughs> it felt like this was going to be a painstaking process. Uh, like, we don't know anything, and they sent this. Mm -hmm. What could this mean? And it was, I really like the fact that we actually figured out, like, how things worked. Mm -hmm. It was almost like a science lesson, or a yeah. math lesson, or something. Yeah, like, it was... <laughs> Like something you could conceivably do, like real people could figure this out. And it also is pointing out just like you relate things to yourself, like when they were just like, well, we're hydrogen, or, we're carbon based, yeah, or whatever, all yeah. this stuff. And they're just like, oh, let's throw this formula out there, then that will identify us, and mm -hmm. this will identify that. Man, was it awkward, but it's like, here's your bomb, here's the DMA. Please explain! <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Please explain. <laughs> Proclaim your innocence yes. using only basic algebra. <laughs> <laughs> it was him. <laughs> they put the weapon here to help us understand. They want to know why the weapon was put in the DMA. This implies they may be unaware of the damage the DMA has caused. We want to talk about what was going on with Book and Tarka anymore? Do we? Really? I mean, Reno has had a little communication thing. She used mm -hmm. the black licorice to make it work. Mm -hmm. Um, she only got the message through at the very end. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought it was very obvious um, that Tarka was going to turn on Book. And even Reno's like, no, oh, he's, he's not working on what Book just told him to. Like, Book, pay attention! Pay attention to your like, screens that show up in the middle of the air. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then he uh, he listens to Reno eventually after she's just like, yeah, I'm going to show you the math. You won't understand it, which was funny. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll know that he's lying yeah, to you. Yeah, he's going to be all suspicious about yeah. it. And this year where you carry the three, uh, that means we're going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even much. Shut up. <laughs> and then of course he goes to shoot him and he somehow got the shielding or something from the ship and was like, well, like... That kind of makes sense. I was like, is, I can is, is Reno going to get up and do anything? Or she's just going to sit there. No, the she's just going to munch her licorice yeah. and laugh at him. When you get thirsty, eating all that licorice? I don't know. But yeah, 
Um, this was a turn for book, even though book was already kind of going like, well, we'll wait and see constantly more and more. And then now he's just like, well, Tarkat's plan is going to destroy this entire thing we're in. Kill these 10C, kill us, destroy Earth. So it's not a good plan anymore. <laughs> I guess he left that part Tarka out. gives a shit about Earth. Even care. if it was guaranteed to destroy Earth, he wouldn't care because he could just justify it, be like, well, we'll sacrifice these two planets to prevent any more planets. Well, this, it doesn't fun. fully make sense, his motivation, especially when he calls Book his only other friend other than the one that's in the other universe, though I think he killed himself and died. But he's gonna go there, he's gonna blow it up, he's gonna somehow take the power source so that he can go to the other universe, except mm -hmm. When he blows it up, it's going to destroy everything, and himself included. So that plan. No, it's not going to destroy himself. They're, they're, they got time to leave. They barely got time they to leave. They established He said that. They, they might be able to... And then they'll have 30 days on Earth to come up with a plan. Yeah, <laughs> Their got, scientists got, they got 30 ships. days. They got ships. Yeah, they yeah. can evacuate. Yeah. There's always Earth, They'll too. just a, attach a bunch of rockets to it and just move Earth slightly to the left, and it'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's perfectly fine. Mm. So yeah, Tarka. Becoming the villain. <laughs> Still down, but it doesn't matter. We're almost at the power source. We just need to figure out how to fly this damn thing. You were right. I should have listened to you. I know it might feel like all is lost. And okay, maybe it is. Become the villain, we knew he would. Yes. Become the villain, he was clearly telegraphed to be from the beginning. Yeah. Okay, so he didn't control the DMA like we thought so in that conversation with Book at the bar. But... <laughs> <laughs> He's smart enough to use it. Again, though, like, so that he can go see his friend. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Anything else? Any final thoughts? Anything else? Um, yeah. yeah, this was good. I quite liked the 10C. I was worried that, you know, once we'd run into them, it would just be kind of disappointing. Um, but I thought they were they were really cool. I kept um, expecting I their... to see a represent, re yeah, representative because when they brought the shuttle down, I was like, is that going to turn into somebody? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they were cool. The problem presented was cool. Working it out was cool. Um, some of the stuff, you know, was a little goofy. There's the, you know, standard discovery, emotions, feelings. Oh, yeah. It's just like, <clears throat> we don't have time for anything. What's sidebar? <laughs> no. Like, oh, we should go onto the shuttle and communicate. I want you to come with me. I want you to come with me. So let's go talk. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just so stressed. Well, Tarka taught me to scream. Have you tried yelling about yeah. it? Yeah. Ah. I do like Saru's yelling, though. That's cool. There's things about Saru that haunt my nightmares because when you look at his like hands and his arms mm -hmm. and everything and everything's rigid, it's like that poor Vulcan girl. <laughs> They'll figure something out. <laughs> yeah. Well, as always, guys, uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. <laughs> and that's what we're in. Hey, I left out Borg vagina ship, but yes, you did. totally looked like one. <laughs> Cool.